Hello everyone, this is Ian Ormus with Tech Defense again, and today we are going to take a little break from malware analysis and hit up local system uh, bypass uh, using a trick commonly referred to as the uh, sticky keys trick. So many of you in the sysadmin realm have probably already used this before to reset some passwords on locked out machines, but uh, others maybe never had to use this. Uh, important to note, on this one, uh, this technique cannot be leveraged remotely. There must be direct access to the victim machine for this to work. So let's uh, get into the demo. All right, some of the prerequisites for this one is uh, you're going to need a live CD, a Linux live CD, like uh, Backtrack or Nopix, uh, something that you can um, boot into. So uh, if you're running VMware, you know, download Backtrack if you don't have it already. And in your VMware settings, tell it to uh, check out or, or to connect to that ISO at power on. And of course, if you're sitting in front of the machine, just burn it to CD. Pop that Linux Live CD into uh, the physical machine and restart it. And once you restart it, you should get a prompt, uh, assuming you have uh, the ability to boot from CD, you should have a prompt for that that live distro that you're using. So that's where we're going to start off our demo here. All right, so you'll notice that I'm already in the uh, Backtrack 5 uh, distro. I've booted up. So the first thing we got to do is obviously uh, we need to mount that Windows disk on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to change sticky keys to launch command prompt instead of sticky keys. So when we hit shift five times, um, it'll bring up the command prompt instead of sticky keys, allowing us to then uh, do normal stuff that Shell would let us do. So first things first is mount that disk. So um, first you got to know what disks are available. So type in fdisk tech L, which is we're going to show you any hard disks that are available. Uh, in, VMware, in VMware, if you're booting off of uh, your XP mode disk or, or whatever it happens. You're only going to see one, but you may have others depending on how this is set up for you. Um, so the first thing uh, from there is now we're going to uh, make a directory to mount this stuff to. Alright, so I made the directory uh, mount slash pwned. And now I'm going to mount that drive that we saw. So slash dev slash sda1 2 slash mount slash pwned. So now if we go to cd slash mount pwned and do an ls, we're going to see our normal Windows stuff. And here's where the fun starts, right? So if we want to be able to um, you know, trick Windows into open up command prompt and we hit sticky keys, uh, naturally we're going to have to change the process name for sticky keys uh, away from what it is and have command prompt renamed for it. So cd to windows and then system32 from your pwn directory. And let's first let's check out what these files are. So just to show you what files we're going to be playing with here. Okay, so grep set hc set hc dot exe. And you'll see here, I have one file for setHC. So what I'm going to do is copy setHC.exe uh, to setHC underscore old dot exe. So I'm just copying over to rename it so I have a copy of the original when I want to bring it back over. Um, so now let's take a look at our next guy here, which is... Or first, I guess I'll show you now that we have two, set hc exe and set hc 
underscore old at 80. So now I'm going to copy command dot exe to set hc dot exe. Okay, sorry about that. I uh, ran out of disk space on this disk, so I had to quickly remove some other stuff, and now we're back on to the demo. Um, so I've copied cmd.exe to set hc.exe, so just to show you that they're the same file, let's do a ls l pipe it to grep for, let's do cmd.exe first. Okay, so you'll see the size there, 550912, and when we do that same thing for set hc, exe, you'll see the same size. So, uh, same file, we've gone ahead and, and renamed it. So now uh, we need to power off this instance and restart without booting back into Linux. Um, and boot directly up to um, Windows XP, Server 2003, whichever one you're working with, so we can um, test this out. So hopefully when we start this back up, we'll press the keys five times and get a command prompt, which will allow us to then uh, get into the machine. So go ahead and power off, halt, whatever command you use. And this will take a couple seconds. So in the meantime, I'm going to cut away, and we'll be back when we're back uh, with that XP machine. Okay, so now if you have your machine back up and you're at the normal Windows prompt, hit Shift five times, and instead of sticky keys, you're going to get a command prompt. Now you can do all the fun stuff that you would normally do once you had Shell. Uh, in my case, we're going to play as if I'm trying to get into this machine. I don't know the password for it. So, net user, just to show you real quick that this machine is very slow. Okay, so as you can see, um, those are the accounts that we currently have on the, on the machine. So I'm going to do a quick net user enormous slash add so now if we do a net user again you'll see that we have a new account there and uh, we don't want just to have that account we also want that to have the appropriate privileges that come along with um, you know hacking machine right so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to say net local group administrators. I think I spelled that correctly. Slash add enormous. And it's successful. So now I'm part of that group. Um, and of course, we could do all the normal stuff that we would like to be able to do once in a shell if we wanted to. But for now, let's go ahead and exit from the shell. Send a control out delete to the screen. And you'll notice that when I created eEnormous, I didn't use a password. I didn't create a password for it. So this should get us in if we've done this correctly. And it shut down unexpectedly the last time I was on it. There we go. And as you can see, we can now get into the device. Um, you know, once on the device, you could again do whatever you were trying to do in the first place. But that about covers it. Um, so, if you have any questions about this tip or any of the other tech tips he's done, or have any suggestions on what we should do in the future, please hit me up at the normal enormous at techdefense.com. Uh, of course, you can just leave a comment on the video wherever you happen to see it, whether it be on YouTube, SecurityTube, or Tech Defense itself. All right, thank you.